one thing is where another thing is how many of us are worn out by this time polyethylene teflon was what chanle started the articulation with progressed to high density polyethylene and came up with wear and extensive bone destruction logically had to move up and came up with ultra high molecular weight branched chains as you can see in this these are these are parallel branch chains at the suggestion of a salesman as i said this morning what causes osteolysis is broadly debris the size of bacteria which the macrophages try to eat and can we prevent this yes if we produce debris via the surfaces which generate little or no biologically active wear debris and so the new materials in this, this are coming up in. besides my topic we all know about metal on metal ceramic on ceramic Green and now ceramic on metal the migratory birds come what is a cross linked polyethylene there's no sea like these are long there. polyethylene chains the and cross linked to each other by exposing the, the ultra high molecular weight polyethylene which looks like this to gamma irradiation there's no sea like which there. leads to production of free radicals which then bind together and form these highly cross linked chains cross linked poly is then further converted into the implant or the socket by either extrusion that is you form this kind of sheets from the powder or by hot molding that is directly from the powder you form the cup and in either case you smoothen it up and finally sterilize it the cross link polyethylene is actually produced by doses of 5 to 15 rads and it has been shown that the cross linking is best up to 5 and up to 15 you keep gaining marginally better cross linking but no additional benefit is seen after 15 to 20 rads at the same time if this is done in open air or it is not in vacuum or nitrogen environment you will have scission or breaking of these chains which lead due to oxidation which leads to brittle weak and product which has poor resistance to wear and subjective to delamination and fracture you can further stabilize it by thermal stabilization which is done to remove these free radicals and free radicals are the ones which actually produce the weakening of this product in amorphous state further if you have the crystalline part which com converts into amorphous part of polyethylene it reduces the mechanical properties that is there is decreased crack resistance that means this particular polyethylene can crack easier and the fracture toughness also reduces but the bargain is while you lose on one side you gain on higher wear resistance after you've produced the product you need to sterilize it and you can sterilize it with either 2.5 rads of gamma or electron radiation in an inert environment once again if it is done in open air you will have brittle product or surface sterilization could be done by eto or gas plasma and based on these principles various companies have produced highly cross linked polyethylenes with a few changes here and there and given these fancy names as per companies mentioned three most influential factors therefore in making this polyethylene is the dose of irradiation type of post irradiation thermal processing and the type of sterilization which i have just told you and the product has a remarkable resistance to both wear and oxidative degeneration and chemically inert plastic with good resistance to creep so the highly cross linked polyethylene has a good resistance to creep and which is the reason why when you measure this you measure it at about 2 years to get some indication how much wear is being produced and there are some on the other hand losses when you make this in the process of manufacturing 
the ultimate strength and ductility and toughness of crosslink poly is less. So we have bargained for good or low wear rates in, uh, in comparison to these other uh, properties. There are two generations uh, of these. The first generation had an issue with some micron particles which were released which initiated inflammatory response and now the newer ones which are being produced, that is the second generation, are with vitamin E infusion or the sequential annealing, that is you anneal the product three times to get a strong. A couple of papers which have come, there are not too many at the moment with long term, and one is from clinical orthopedics that suggests that total hip arthroplasty with highly cross-linked poly in patients 50 years of age have shown low poly wear, and there has been no catastrophic wear, but mind you, the maximum is 6.5 years. The next paper is the one we have talked about this morning that showed steady state penetration rate extremely low with uh, cross-linked poly, and the male-female difference I alluded to this morning was more conven with conventional poly. And last but not the least, this paper uh, recently published on uh, highly cross-linked polys in total knee replacement here. And here the PE bearings in the first generation, there were post fractures which were noted. In the second generation, they have suggested the sequential annealing and they have suggested wait for five years to get a better result. In conclusion, the cross-linked polys are substantially less expensive and comparable than comparable ceramic or metal bearings. Wear from impingement between neck and rim is bad because we have the surface wear has improved, but impingement wear has worsened and the peer review results are awaited. Thank you.